say someone goes on the treadmill for the first time, they're on their weight loss journey. 30 minutes on the treadmill, let's just say they're walking at a 5% incline at 2 miles an hour, right? Day one. On that day one, they might burn 300 calories in that 30 minutes, right? Well, line them up, line them up, knock them down. Yeah. Yeah. They said it was a grind. They said it takes time, yeah, I know. I guess they were in line. Every time I try to climb, they cut the rope. I fell straight to the bottom, got problems, I don't really want to talk about them, no. I've been down this road too many times to be afraid, I close my eyes when I walk down it. What's going on, YouTube? You're back with the Prez. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about weight loss. Specifically, why you guys should stop trying to do more activity to burn calories. That's not the way to do it, right? I've said this many times in the past, guys. Whether your goal is to lose weight, gain weight, you gotta figure out what your maintenance calories are first, right? And then you wanna be, whatever the goal is, and like I said, today's video is based on weight loss. We're gonna be talking about weight loss and the problems that people make, right? Remember, weight loss comes from burning more calories than your body takes in. People think burning more calories means they gotta literally burn more calories throughout the day. I've said this numerous times in the past, guys. You should always let the calories in, meaning the food you take in, do the work for you. You guys have also heard me say numerous times in the past that it's very important to get your steps in, right? And that's an easy way to increase energy expenditure. But walking is a function of life that's a basic principle, right? We should always be able to walk. And again, guys, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it as you get older. So one thing I always say, and you don't have to take this into account when it comes to burning extra calories, but a good recommendation for most people is a 10,000 a day step mark, right? Because that's just going to provide cardiovascular benefits as well as just overall health benefits. But that's not going to really dictate a big calorie deficit towards your weight loss goals. The number one thing that you guys should focus on when trying to lose weight is strictly being in a calorie deficit that's according to your maintenance calories, right? You don't want it to be too big, because remember, your body always picks up with itself, right? So, if your maintenance calories are 3,000 calories now, for instance, and we start going on a cut, let's just say we cut drastically, we go to a 2,500 calorie, which is a 500 calorie deficit, within a couple of weeks, three, four week period of eating 2,500 calories, 2,500 calories is now gonna become your new maintenance. And then you're gonna have to start dropping more and more calories in order to continuously hit weight loss. Now remember, like I said, the biggest mistake most people do is trying to burn more calories throughout the day through extra activity. Why do I say that's a big mistake? Because your body becomes very efficient at doing things that it does often. For instance, if somebody goes on the treadmill every day for the first time, well, let's just say somebody goes on the treadmill for the first time they're on their weight loss journey. 30 minutes on the treadmill, let's just say they're walking at a 5% incline at 2 miles an hour, right? Day one. On that day one, they might burn 300 calories in that 30 minutes, right? They come on it two days later. 30 minutes again, maybe this time they only burn 290 calories. A week from then, maybe they're only down to burning 270 calories. Doing the same exact work, same 30 minutes on the treadmill, same speed, same incline, but every session your body gets more and more efficient at it and it burns less. Why? Because your body doesn't want to be in a state where it always has to work, work, work to keep burning calories, right? So let me say this. It's very easy to eat 200 calories, but it's not that easy to burn 200 calories, right? So for say somebody is a soda drinker and they drink in a regular Coke, I don't know, maybe it's 150 calories, 200 calories. How long is it gonna take them to finish that drink? Two, maybe five minutes, depending on how fast or what they're drinking it with or how thirsty they are. So you're gonna be able to consume that 200 calories rather quickly, right? And let's look at it a different way. Let's say you wanna eat some ice cream. Ice cream is going to be even higher calories. Let's say you want to have a serving of ice cream, typically maybe 300 to 500 calories. You're going to eat that bowl of ice cream in 5-10 minutes. Do you know the amount of treadmill walking to burn 500 calories? You would probably have to go on a strict incline, maybe 15% incline, probably walk around 3 miles an hour at a high intensity rate just to burn off those calories that took 10 minutes to eat. Now you've got to work for 45 minutes to an hour to burn them off. So the number one thing that you guys should focus on when trying to lose weight is keeping that calorie deficit strict. So if you're, and like I said, I never really have a client go on a 
a big deficit initially, like 500 calorie drop off the jump. So let's just go again. Person A has a maintenance calories of 3,000 calories. They want to lose weight. I would start them on a deficit around 2,800 calories, maybe 2,700 calories, depending on how much weight they actually want to lose. Because remember, your body will always pick up to its current state. So we start him on a 2,800 calorie diet, right? So that's a 200 calorie a day deficit. Initially, he's going to notice some fat loss, right, and some weight loss. Remember, 3,500 calories typically means one pound. If you eat 3,500 calories more than you burn, you may gain a pound. If you burn, if you eat 3,500 calories less than you burn, you're going to lose a pound, right? Now, combining a calorie deficit along with weight training, meaning resistance training, is your best bet. Why? Because resistance training builds muscle. What does muscle do? More lean body mass on your body. So let's just say person A at 3,000 calories starting his diet, he's 20% body fat, right? Now he drops down to 15% body fat. So he increased his lean body mass by 5%, meaning he built muscle. That muscle at rest in general is going to have your body burning more calories. So combining that 200 calorie deficit, and let's say we didn't want to resist the train. Let's say we want to do 200 calorie deficit, and we want to add in cardio to burn 300 calories every day. So we're going to go on the treadmill and work to burn 300 calories. Every time you go on that treadmill, you're going to have to work harder and harder to burn that extra 300 calories. Whereas if you go to the gym and you start lifting weights, remember, training in general is going to be something that burns calories. Say you're doing an hour-long session, right? You might burn an extra 300, 400 calories just in the gym doing resistance training. And I'm not talking about hit, high intensity where we're going superset or back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back pyramid or circuit training. I'm talking about going in and doing, let's just say, a, a general 60-minute Five exercises, three sets of 10 reps. You might burn a good three, maybe 400 calories extra depending on how hard you're working and the intensity of the workout itself, right? So building more muscle and trying to maintain as much muscle mass as possible while cutting is going to be the number one thing you should do because the more lean body mass you have, the higher your metabolic rate is going to be at rest. So now let's say, for instance, this person A, he's on that 200 calorie day deficit, eating 2,800 calories, and then within the first month, let's say he loses a good two to three pounds of fat, but he also increased his lean body mass at the same time. So now he built muscle and lost fat. His metabolism is naturally going to be faster. And now from that 2,800 calorie deficit, all we got to do now is drop it another 200 calories. Let's drop down to 2,600. His body will start picking up. And eventually, after about three or four weeks, his maintenance will come 2,600. But now he only dropped a total of 400 calories from his initial maintenance calories of 3,000, but in that meantime, now he's lost six pounds. And now he also dropped his body fat percentage. Now he's at 12, 13%. So he's about two months in, he went from 20% to close to 12, 13%. So he lost 7% body fat, increased his lean body mass overall, increasing his metabolism with only very minimal decrease in calories, right? And again, guys, remember, you don't have to really worry about what macronutrients you're depleting, you always want to make sure protein stays constant. Protein should always stay around one gram per pound of body weight. And as you cut the rest of the calories down, so if you want to drop 200 calories, that could be 25 grams of carbs, right? Or 50 grams of carbs. So you could lower 50 grams of carbs. Remember, 50 times 4 is 200. You could also lower, let's say, uh, 20 grams of fat, 20 times 9. Going to be close to 200 calories, right? Simple. You keep the protein constant. And then you just minimize a little bit of carbs, a little bit of fat, or a combination of both to continuously hit that calorie reduction, right? You don't have to worry about going out and burning extra calories, hitting the treadmill every day. Keep the calories to do the work for you, right? So you want to keep making small drops in calorie requirements, as well as in continuously resistance train and working on building and maintaining as much muscle mass as possible. So listen, guys, stop trying to burn extra calories to lose the weight. That's the number one thing you guys are making a mistake at doing, right? You're just going to start burning muscle and fat at the same time, and that's not what you want to do. You want to maintain muscle while burning fat, and the best way of doing that, guys, small calorie deficits, let those calorie deficits do the work for you. Remember, your body has a maintenance level. Over a couple week period, it will catch up to the new maintenance level that you're now eating. So we'll start again. We started 3,000. We dropped to 2,800. About a month later, 2,800 calories is going to become your maintenance. Then you can drop it down, down again, 2,600. 
all while resistance training at the same time. I'm not saying don't do cardio. Cardio should be more beneficial and more looked at towards heart, heart health, right? And then more towards when you get down to like that 10%, 11% body fat and you really want to start, instead of decreasing the calories now more and more, now we can really start to do different types of cardio, more high intensity work, adding a little bit more treadmill work then to drop a couple more calories, right? Instead of eating less food, that's when we can start to manipulate the, uh, the cardio uh, performance that we're doing, right? But the number one mistake people have is trying to throw everything at the book at once. Let the calories do the majority of the deficit for you and make the weight loss come like that. Once you hit lower levels of body fat, when it comes harder and harder to lose fat, that's when you guys can start increasing the cardio work. That's when you guys can start increasing the high intensity interval training, right? But like I said in the past, don't start doing, don't drop your calories and at the same start, time start doing cardio and then do circuit training because you're going to be doing too much all at once is going to put a stress on the body. Remember guys, when you're in a calorie deficit, you're already putting your body at a stressed out state because you're eating less than it's required. So the body's natural response is to decrease its size because the current size that it has now, what you're at now, is not sustainable at that lower calorie level. That's why you start losing fat and that's why the importance of keeping resistance training in the program to maintain and maximize the muscle mass that you have and continuously increase the lean body mass as you drop the fat. That's the goal that you guys should be looking for when trying to make weight loss progress. So I hope this gave you guys a little insight into the mistakes that you guys could be making when trying to lose weight, right? If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section. I'll get back to it. I always respond back. Don't forget, guys, like these videos. It really helps the algorithm out, helps the channel grow. We're almost at 15K, guys. Maybe by the time this drops, we already have hit 15K. I hope so. But don't forget, guys, to like the video, share the video as well. Share with your friends and family or someone else who might need or is struggling with weight loss, right? And if you guys are, neat, are new to calisthenics or new to weight training in general, listen, go on my website, barnaturalfitness.com. You guys are going to be able to subscribe to my newsletter. Once you subscribe to the newsletter, you're going to get an automatic free download. And I wrote a really, really good program out. There's two versions of it. There's a version for intermediates and beginners, and there's a version for more intermediate to advanced athletes, right? So if you're a beginner, you got a program for you, and if you're more advanced, there's a program for you. It's going to be one download. All you got to do is sign up for the newsletter, and I really appreciate, appreciate the support, guys. Don't forget, share the video, like the video, leave a comment, and like always, guys, peace out. Born Naturals. For a die, I'm top three. For a die, I'm top three. For a die, look.